Good morning and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a very specific reading vlog. I did a blind date with your TBR video at the beginning or middle of February and I pulled a book <laughs> and it was not a great time for me. I'm really fucking lost. I don't know what's happening. Already not giving me vibes of like going to be super enjoyable right now. I don't know. I don't know who. I don't understand. <sighs> I'm so stressed out by this book. <laughs> There's too much happening for me to enjoy this right now. I'm gonna DNF it. This was a book gifted to me by somebody. So the book is The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin and I'm hoping that this vlog is just the beginning of my love of their writing. Let me backtrack a little bit to how I acquired this book, why I have this book, and who recommended me this book. So I want to say like late 2020, Sage actually had a mention either on their Twitter or just like messaged us in group chat and was like, hey, would anybody be interested in like swapping books with me and like it'd be like a swap recommendation i was like of, of course so me and sage like swapped recommendations and like sent the book to each other except i was a trash human being and only like messaged sage when i arrived and i didn't do anything after that whereas sage and zara did videos for each other and then i think they did it again and i was like i'm a piece of shit this is a very like well-known author name in the sci-fi community, in the booktube community. And I know Sage loved this book. I think this is supposed to be a bit apocalyptic because if people are living on a connected continent and it splits, that can only mean like end of days kind of shit. It does say that it's called like the Great Red Rift across the heart of the world's soul continent and it spews ash that blots out the sun. Death and betrayal and murder and then it says, um, this is the stillness, which I could think is the name of the actual continent. Power of the earth is wielded as a weapon and there is no mercy. So I'm assuming that maybe there are just elemental powers or maybe the character that has split the continent. Maybe they're the, pers the only person with power. I'm not sure. It was all super unclear. I tried to listen to it as an audiobook because I was like, you know, I'm really great at audiobooks. I can listen on two times speed. And 30 pages in, I was like, I need to create a chart or something. I need to write notes. I greatly trust Sage's opinion on books and recommendations and I want to be in on this not well-kept secret. <laughs> Looking cute. I didn't read it all last night. Sorry guys. I got this really cute PJ set a few days ago from Target. Now that pre-morning, I forgot to take my allergy medicine sound, but we're gonna hop into fifth season. My highlighter and what are you called? Post-it note available. And then I also have my laptop handy in case I need to look up like the map and maybe like, I don't want to spoil anything, but I might pull up like a character uh, appendix so that I have a reference. I, mm, I also have my headphones ready and available so that when I do get more comfortable with it, I can pull up the audiobook. Good morning to me. Good morning to my allergies. Good morning to my coffee being done right now. Got some skin in here. <laughs> say I'm on page three <laughs> progress and already I can tell that this book is not meant for audiobook for me audiobook for me is like easy listening so I find that I'm not able to give my full attention to a book if it is an audiobook and it has like too much world building I tend to steer more toward audiobooks for romance or for like lighter fiction mysteries thrillers um Granted, these might not be considered light reading in written format. I'm so much more invested and I'm, I'm excited. I'm really excited. Um, this is a great angle, Angel. This is great. Um, I'm treating it like a sacred text, like the sacred text that it is because Sage bought this for me <laughs> and I love and appreciate them. And 
my thoughts so far are it's kind of a funny story so far like no the the author writes it in a funny way so there are moments where like I think this is what threw me last time is that you get this heavy description of this initial city at the first few pages in the prologue and then the little section ends and it says none of these places or people matter by the way I simply point them out for context and there I'm just like wait <laughs> um I'm also gonna say I maybe I'm just thirsty but I have like a strange attraction to this guy up on a hill that they're talking about that literally split the the continent in half um he just seems very <laughs> he just seems very like sad it sounds like he's maybe several people are able to like feel vibrations in the earth and like sense things coming and change things and um it was talking about him uh, being of like the slave race that people were like bred and brainwashed and developed like this this race of people and the slaves through like coercion and rape i like that character and i don't know if he's ever gonna show up again i don't think we even know his name we're gonna have like a movie break midday here and get some breakfast as well. <laughs> and I'm having a great time. Sage, you are. I'm so sage. I'm so happy. I am now on page 105. And um, it's going pretty well. At this point, we have quite a cast of characters. They're all in like different parts of this world. And things are very slowly coming into place. Like, I, I'm still not very clear on, like, the whole world building or, like, what is has come before. There's also this power that some people have and people are looked down at, for the most part, for having this power. And it is, like, to kind of connect with the earth and, like, cause tremors and cause, like, rifts in the earth. And some of them, I think, have the ability to, like, pull energy from fire and from, like, cold, like, uh, for ice and stuff but it's, it's still unraveling, so I'm really not clear on what that is. There are some first-person and some third-person points of view, the first person being a character named Usun, and their son has been killed, and you are to assume that it is the father. They have this power to, like, use the Earth's energy, I guess. Depending on the character, there are characters that have different levels of, I guess, power over it, or the ability to control it. I, uh, I'm so happy, guys. Look at me listening to what you said to read, Sage, and I'm reading it and enjoying it. Although, honestly, like, I'm a quarter of the way in. This is scary to me. Tomorrow, after work, I'm going to set myself a goal of reading another 100 pages. I think maybe at, like, the halfway part, if I start telling you people are dying or I start telling you, like, intricate parts of the story, that would be spoilers. But for right now, we're in safe territory. You can see the remains of some pizza back here. I wanted to check in, though, because, oh my god, I got to a point where I kind of wanted to cry. We're on page 148, and we just went past a scene that was so painful to read because of the content of it and, like, what this means for this world developing. I would already mentioned previously that these orogenes are very much slaves and used for their powers and this scene was just mm, solidifying it even more and it was just so painful and it was just really upsetting and um, <clears throat> at the same time all I could think of is the fact that this is bringing these two characters closer together and I am really enjoying their relationship um, as like master and person being trained. Back in this corner, beside Bent, uh, beside Jose's bookshelves, Bento is just being a terror. Hey, stop that. Stop that. No. Stop being naughty. Also, she definitely knows that I'm filming her. <laughs> You're terrified. Get the no. Oh. <laughs> Ow! Don't bite me. You won. I don't know what else to say. It's hard to like speak to it without spoiling things because I want to just tell you every single little subplot going on. I will say there's another character that has been introduced somewhat recently who is very mysterious. There's a young boy who 
we don't know like anything about. Things are developing that I was not anticipating. I don't know. I just, I'm really liking marking up this book. And I, I like saying this, but unless something go dra goes drastically wrong, I don't anticipate giving this book anything less than five. Ow, oh, Bento is eating me. Excuse me. No. Now, like, I know that the, the next one, next books are The Obelisk Gate and The Stone Sky. Like, The Obelisk Gate, I, I have a feeling I might know what that's refer. I know what it's referring to, but I also am like, oh, the other part is that, like, there are these moments where they talk about, like, Dead Civ, which is, like, the previous civilizations that came before this fifth season round. Nobody knows who put them there and nobody knows who created them and why they're there. They're literally from like a previous civilization. We've had some more success and now on page 212. I think I might not do another little update until we get to like another big plot point. Although I feel like we're, we're almost halfway through and I feel like everything is a big plot point. Like everything is developing. We're back to seeing this one girl who was like bought by a child buyer who was actually a guardian to take her to the fulcrum which is a place where they train these orogenes orogenes to use their powers like there was an interesting line in a different section about how they're like gods that are chained um and used however other people see fit by the by the government more or less i'm just heading home now and I'm gonna do some reading sprints on the channel. It's the first time I've ever done them on my channel. And I am going to try to catch up on the next 100 pages. You're seeing a bit more into the world of the Orogenes and how they function, how their power works. Pretty much the same way that I felt in reading Escaping Exodus because I felt like I was finally starting to get the puzzle pieces but there's still so much mystery left. It's just fascinating and beautifully written and I know that this is a trilogy and so I'm actually really excited for the rest of the books because if there's a trilogy that means that there is going to be a cliffhanger or something that needs to be resolved after this book. I'm like currently doing sprints on my channel and like I I'm on page 390. Things have progressed obviously since we last spoke but excuse I, I I'm not gonna do spoilers but excuse me is that is that what's happening? Is that who, are they, are they, excuse, like, if you own a copy and you've read this book, go to that page, go to these pages and tell me, am I right? Are they like, the, are, is it all, <laughs> this is the weirdest part of this vlog, but I'm like overwhelmed. I started like frantically writing on post-its because I'm like, is that, are you, is that this, I, I can't say, okay. I, uh, I also have been live streaming this for like four and a half hours, so I might be like breaking from reality, but I'm, what? What? So we're in the final countdown. I'm on page 412. Right before I went to bed last night, I finished up like the pages I needed to finish yesterday. And this book is actually a little shorter than I thought. It's only 440 nine pages. I'm going to read a little bit in between meetings today because it's a very, very busy day. And um, we're going to do another live stream tonight in which if I don't finish it during the day, I should be able to finish it after work. So so excited to finish it. I'm definitely going to be picking up the other books unless I, I really don't think there's much that could go wrong in the next 40 pages. But this will also be a clip that I can cut back to if something goes terribly wrong. I know last night on the live stream, Sarah was saying that they don't remember the last, the, like the end of the book, but you know, Sage was like, I read this book. <laughs> they read the whole series in like four days, which makes no sense to me. I'm just, I'm so exhilarated also. This is the update on my tabs. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm so scared. Page 440. I have nine pages left. Something's already happening and I'm scared because I'm like, where the hell? <sighs> It's all falling apart. Gonna film and see if anything else transpires. Sorry if you heard that, that was the um, anti-poop spray <laughs> in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. I don't ugh, get my cozy, my cozy sweater. Okay, okay. Angel, you can do this. You are strong. It is only a book. Ugh. Oh, ugh.
it's just like kind of funny. Okay, it's done. And all I have to say is like, oh boy, is this written to be a sequel? Like that was like the biggest cliffhanger. And I was trying not to cry because I thought something was gonna happen and then it just didn't happen because they're like, psych, you gotta read the next book. <sighs> okay, so it's five stars. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't even wanna say why. It, it's very good. <sighs> I can't, I can't function right now. I have the reading sprints in half an hour. I think Sarah's gonna be joining me too, but let me, okay, let's gather our thoughts. So what's the point of this video? What's the point of having read this book? What's the point, Angel? I guess the biggest thing is like, did Sage really like understand what I would want in a book? Yes, fucking yes. In general, like, I don't know if I would have liked it if I read it back then. Like, it's a very good book. It has a caste system, it has powers, it is involving like education and teaching people, although also it has a lot of darker elements. Offhand trigger warnings for, I guess, questionable consent slash like two people being forced to be intimate and have sex. A lot of very dark imagery surrounding children and like death of children, that kind of thing, but like to a weird extreme that you wouldn't be able to imagine unless you read it in this book. There's also a lot of violence. Death to an extent, but it, I feel like it's less described. It's more the violence. I have so many questions. I feel like this is the closest I've gotten in an experience of like trying to understand and like guess what's going to happen in a book. Almost like the Starless Sea. I think this was pretty comparable to that, but it's not confusing. I think that there's like just enough information sprinkled up to a reveal, like for dozens of pages and chapters that like it still feels really nice. Also, you don't get enough information about the history because the characters don't know enough about their own history. And it's hard to really grasp like the magnitude of how many people have lived before them and how societies have changed because there are so many instances where they say like, you know, history has been erased and like history has been rewritten to favor the ones in power. I'm blown away. Okay, well, I guess it's another favorite book of the year so far, like an all time favorite. I am gonna end the vlog here. If you made it this far, you enjoyed watching my roller coaster of emotions and honestly, me just eating a good book. <laughs> I ate the hell out of this book. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book, if you read the rest of the series, I would love to know your thoughts overall. Although obviously, please don't spoil anything for the other two books. See you next time.